As Bitcoiners, many of us will be familiar with the idea of being self-sovereign, doing things like holding your own keys, running your own node, don't trust verify, and all of the other concepts that come along with. Many people have begun to run their own dedicated devices to do many of those actions. Now with those devices comes the option to also claim sovereignty over your own data. Today we're going to be taking a look at one such application called Vault Warden. This is available on the Start9 Embassy, which we'll be using today, but is also available on a variety of other node implementations out there. Vault Warden allows you to host a copy of your own password manager and not have to rely on a third party to do so for you. I am Ben with the BTC Sessions. This is your daily session. Bitcoin. Before we dive in, shout out to sponsors of the show, hodlhodl.com. If you are buying Bitcoin and you've got a few priorities in mind, things like peer-to-peer -peer trading, things like instant self-custody, and being able to not provide all of your personal information just in order to get Bitcoin, meaning non-KYC, then HODL HODL is the place to for you. You can sign up in just minutes with nothing more than an email address and you will very shortly be peer-to-peer -peer trading and getting your hands on non-KYC sats. Head over to hodlhodl.com and check them out. And they also do have a lending platform in which nothing is ever rehypothecated. So you can check out that if that's up your alley as well. Either way, the whole platform is super easy and intuitive to use. Check it out today. Now, when you do get your hands on non-KYC sats, you're gonna wanna store it and secure it with the best hardware on the market. And nothing, my friends, beats the cold card Mark IV. I love this thing, it's an absolute beast. I've done a marathon tutorial on it, which you can check out. Uh, but they've also got tons of other great stuff here on coinkite.com. Uh, they've got the tap signer, the sats card, the block clock, all kinds of great stuff. And coming down the pipe by the end of the year, the cold card Q1, which again, looks insane so check out coinkite.com you can use code btc sessions for five percent off everything in the store now beyond that if you're looking to go beyond just a single sig option and you're looking to dive into multi-sig i can't think of a better option than nunchuck.io and their honey badger program what this is is it's an assisted multi-sig setup very simple and intuitive to use on your mobile device it uses things like the cold card and the tap sign are very simple to use those with this and it has baked in inheritance planning um and so you can be, have the peace of mind knowing that your sats will get to your next of kin should anything happen to you very simply, very easily. And the, one of my favorite things about it, well, it's non-KYC. It really sets it apart from everything else on the market. You can sign up again with nothing more than an email address and you don't have to give up all your private information just to make sure that your family gets their Bitcoin that they are entitled to. Check them out today and I've also got a full tutorial on this. And finally, we're going to be touching on the Start9 Embassy today as an example for this tutorial. But if you're unfamiliar, Start9 Labs, uh, these guys are your sovereign computing solution. You can run your full Bitcoin stack. So things like Bitcoin Core, your Lightning Node, uh, things like mempool.space or Join Market. But you can also host your own data like we're going to see passwords, but also files, photos, whatever you like. You can even run Nostra relays and Nostra clients on it. Uh, so this thing is absolutely badass. Be sure to check them out start9.com if you're looking for something basic the start nine embassy one and if you're looking for something really beefy some really good solid computing power to host your life then the embassy pro cannot go wrong check them out links are down below and with that let's dive into the show All right, so let's start with kind of some prerequisites and lay out what we're actually gonna do here today. Um, so just to be clear, I'm working from a Mac for this video. So if you're working from uh, a Linux computer or Windows computer, this is gonna vary a little bit 
for you, okay? Um, also, right out the gate, I'm gonna be doing some setup stuff with getting Tor running uh, on my Mac in the background and with Firefox browser, which is we're gonna, what we're gonna be using to use our password manager easily from anywhere, not just locally in our home network. Um, some of that stuff will require command line. Now, don't run away, don't worry. Uh, we will walk through it and there are uh, web pages that I will put in the show notes that also give you um, effectively exactly what to copy and paste as you're doing this on your computer. And just so you know, in regards to all the Tor stuff, it won't affect anything else. It basically just allows you to use Tor, which is an encrypted network, uh, that anything that needs to use Tor will, and everything else will be just left alone. So it's just kind of like you're adding an extra feature in the background of your computer, which you're not even gonna really notice unless you need it. All right, um, so yeah, basically all you need in this instance, we're gonna be working from the Start9 embassy. You may have a different node implementation. Um, some of the Tor stuff may or may not apply to you, depending. Um, no harm in doing it if you decide to do it. Uh, and then on top of that, um, we're going to be using Firefox browser, as I said, because it is easier to work with Tor within that. And other than that, if you're using a different node, if you're on a different type of computer, hopefully you can glean enough from this tutorial to be able to use it regardless. But if you're already on Start9 and if you're using a Mac, then you can pretty much just follow verbatim. So with that, let's get started and uh, let's kick this thing off. All right, so here I am on my Start9 Embassy. Everything is kind of already up and running, at least all the stuff that I've been using up to this point. Uh, but we want to first download Vault Warden on our Embassy. By the way, if you're not already set up with your Start9 and you need to get up to this point, I'll link my Start9 tutorial down in the show notes below. You can go through that first and then get to here later, all right? Uh, nonetheless, we're gonna go over to the Marketplace and uh, it is here on the main page, but you can also just search the term Vault Warden and that'll bring it up right here in the search bar. So I'm gonna click on Vault Warden and up top there's a big green button that says install. I'm gonna click that. It will take a moment to go through. I can hit view installed when that button pops up and it will show me the progress as it happens. So we'll just jump ahead to when this is finished. So once everything is finished downloading, uh, you can navigate back uh, on the top left, you hit services, you'll see Vault Warden just sitting there ready to set up. It'll be yellow, it'll say needs config. So all you do, you tap on that and you're gonna hit the configure button. Uh, it shows you an admin token. Uh, you don't need to show that or anything, but uh, from there, all you really need to do is just hit save. Everything is ready to go. And then you're gonna hit the start button and it will do a quick health check, making sure that the web UI is ready to use. And as soon as you see this green check mark pop up, you can go ahead and when we're ready, we will launch the UI. However, we've got a few things to do before that. Uh, we also wanna go on our Firefox browser, we're gonna download something called Bitwarden, which you can then connect to your Vault Warden. Um, so this is just a plugin in your Chrome browser, or sorry, in your Firefox browser. So somewhere in and around your uh, actual um, URL um, box, somewhere over probably on the right, there's gonna be this little sandwich board, these three little lines. Uh, I'll open up a new a new tab here, but uh, you're gonna hit the sandwich board and then there's gonna be an option, add-ons and themes. So we're gonna go to that and that will take us to this page. You're gonna be, make sure that extensions is highlighted and you're gonna type in Bitwarden, B-I-T-W-A-R-D-E-N and hit enter. And the first one will probably be the one that is correct, Bitwarden free password manager. That's what you want, you're gonna click on it you can hit add to Firefox. It will now show up here in the extension. You just hit the add button and then you hit uh, okay. And you can, if you wanna allow this to run in private windows, you can check it off, just hit okay. All right, so we're gonna leave this be 
for right now because we're going to need to do some setup here momentarily once we've got things sorted but we need to go especially on a, a mac here we're going to make sure that we have tor in the background so that we can access our start nine browser from our bitwarden plugin Okay, so this next section, we're gonna be installing Tor on your Mac. Again, if you're not on a Mac, it's gonna vary a little bit. Um, they have extensive documentation on the Start9 website. I will link this below as well so that you have all the easy copy paste, everything that you need, but that's all it's gonna be. Even though it seems, uh, a, you might be a little bit hesitant to do this. Again, it's, it's copy and paste. That's all we're gonna do, okay? so. On your Mac, um, what you'll do is you'll pull up this page, which will be linked down below. And then in the top right, there's a little uh, magnifying glass. You're gonna open that up and you're gonna type in terminal. And that will bring up first your terminal, which is this little window looks like this, okay? This is where we're gonna be copying and pasting that text. I'm gonna put it up above me here, okay? And so, first thing you're going to need to do is install something called homebrew and so there's a if by the way if you if you hover over this there's a little copy button so you just hit the copy button and then to paste you can either right click or uh easier is just command v and it will paste in everything that you just copied and you just hit enter now i've already uh i've, I've already um, installed this but we'll just go through the steps anyway so you may see some slightly different messaging on your computer because if it's not installed then yeah uh, anyways it asked for my computer password so i'm going to type that in now and i hit enter okay and it says hey this is going to install the following hit return to enter or any other key to abort so i'm going to hit return and it starts doing all of these things uh, and so it takes a little bit and then it will eventually go through everything that it needs and shoot me back and you'll see your username and everything back down at the bottom here again. Okay, great. Uh, we're going to move on in the instructions. It basically tells us, hey, uh, it's going to download and install what it needs. Da, 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 da. Okay. Once we have that, it says we need to install Tor. So we're going to copy this command. We're gonna hit copy. We'll go over to our terminal window and we're gonna paste it in. Brew install Tor, hit enter. Takes a minute, okay. And here obviously for me, it says it's already installed and up to date. Well, for you, it will say, okay, installing and it will do a few more steps. Okay, perfect. Then it says we gotta run Tor with the following command here. I'm gonna copy that and I'm going to paste it in and hit enter. All right, and it says, hey, it's already running. It's already started. Uh, I can restart it with the following command. For you, it will say, okay, it's up and running. All right, fantastic. Now, we need to enable it system-wide. We want to make sure that Tor is available to anything that needs it. So that's what these next commands are for. We're just, again, gonna hover, we're gonna copy, Go to the terminal window and paste and hit enter. Okay, it's gonna ask for a password again. Enter, okay, does a little bit of work. All good, we are set. Next, enable the Apache service. Again, you don't really need to know what this stuff is for the time being. Copy and paste is the name of the game. Copy, paste, enter. All right, there we go. It says it's already in progress. It'll be different for you. Okay. Then it says go to system settings and we're gonna look for network. So up here in the top left, my little Apple, we're going to go to system, I suppose it would be system preferences on mine. Okay. I'm going to look for network, which is right here. Okay, so once we're in our network, we're going to select first USB and then this is a little bit different from the documentation here, but I'll just, I'll show you what it looks like. Uh, you're gonna go down to advanced and then you're gonna go to proxies and you're just gonna make sure that automatic proxy configuration is checked and then you're gonna hit okay. You're gonna do the same thing with Wi-Fi. 
you're going to hit advanced, you're gonna go to proxies, automatic, check it off, hit okay. And then I didn't change anything, but you're gonna need to hit apply down at the bottom and then you're all set. At this point, you now have system-wide Tor enabled everywhere. So whenever something needs Tor, it's gonna be there for it. Up next, we're going to do some configuration with your Firefox browser so that it can easily use Tor as well. So we've got this, again, step-by-step -step explainer of exactly what to do um, within your Firefox browser. So it says, hey, you're gonna open up Firefox and enter, by the way, we can close this terminal window here. So I'm going to, uh, if you really want, you can type clear, that clears everything out. But nonetheless, you can go up here and hit quit terminal. Okay, so it says, hey, you're gonna open a Firefox browser and enter this into the URL bar. So I'm just gonna copy that. Uh, I'll open up a new Firefox and we'll just paste that in. Okay, now it says you're going to search for the following. I'm going to copy that. I'll paste it into this search bar here. And it says, hey, does it allow onions? We're just gonna make sure it says true. If it doesn't, you hit the little button here to make it say true. And then now it says, go to the right hand hamburger menu and select settings. So the hamburger menu is, is the three little lines up here. And we're gonna select settings, which is down near the bottom. You might not have seen it there. Settings, okay, we're in there. Uh, up next, we're going to search the term proxy in the upper right and click the button that says settings. So we're gonna search proxy and we're gonna hit settings. Okay, up next, uh, we're going to select the option labeled system proxy settings and then check the box labeled proxy DNS when using SOX v5. Okay, so again, use system proxy settings is what we're looking for. We've already tapped that, all right? And then check the box labeled proxy DNS when using SOX v5, all right? And so that is right here. I would have clicked that and hit okay. I've already done that previously, so that's all good. And then you hit okay, you restart Firefox. I've done this previously and you're all set. You can now go to Tor Onion URLs within your browser, um, which just means that basically Vault Warden and Bitwarden are gonna be able to access each other via the Tor network in your browser. So I know that a lot of that for many of you, you'll be like, I don't even know what I just did. That's okay. <laughs> we did some stuff in the background, so everything's gonna work. If you just follow that and basically do as I did, and again, you're gonna have both of these links down below for setting up Tor and setting it up in Firefox. All of that will be done. Follow along, copy paste, you'll be set. Moving on, let's get into our Vault Warden. Okay, so we're ready to set up our Vault Warden and then link it to our Bitwarden plugin on our Firefox browser. So within Vault Warden, you're just gonna tap on that application again, and then you're gonna go to Interfaces, you're gonna tap there, and this will be blacked out, but uh, nonetheless, I'm going to be copying uh, the Tor address, uh, which is the top one here. There's a little copy button off to the right. I'm gonna tap that so I can use it elsewhere. Now, in the top right of my, uh, my browser here, my Firefox browser, I will have now the Bitwarden plugin, okay? If I tap it, it will say, hey, you're going to log in here, but actually we need to create our own login in Vault Warden. So we're gonna go ahead and do that momentarily, but for now, we'll just put in our settings and it says, we're going to put in a self-hosted environment. So you're going to paste the URL, the onion URL you just copied from Vault Warden. And this will give you access to your own personally hosted password manager. Um, now, I should say, if you're just gonna be running this locally on your computer, you can do that as well, and you can use the local option there. Uh, but with all the Tor stuff we did, that allows us 
to access it remotely from anywhere. So you just paste that in and then you're gonna hit the save button up in the top right and then we'll come back in a little bit. Okay, so now we actually need to launch the UI here on Vault Warden. So you can do this either from within the Vault Warden application or if you're out of it, if you're on your main screen, there's this little blue uh, square and arrow. You can also click there and that will launch it. Um, in Firefox, you may get these, uh, these little notifications. You can just hit advanced, accept the risk and continue. Okay. So what we're doing is we're creating an account to access our vault. Now you're looking at the, at this thinking, well, why would I need an email address and everything to sign up for this. Who am I signing up for? You're actually, you're completely self hosting this. So there is, there's nobody that's getting this information. It's being hosted on your own start nine embassy. So the answer is nobody gets this. Uh, it's for you to be able to log in remotely with the credentials you've created. You could create an imaginary email address here. It doesn't really matter. Uh, and then password. So, Again, all we're going to do, we're going to hit create account. We're going to use an email address, name, master password, retype master password, and then we can leave a hint uh, if we want to as well. So I'm just going to go ahead, um, I'll, I'll, I'll type in um, an email address, all that stuff, and then we'll try using those credentials to log in momentarily. All right, once you've typed in all your stuff, you're going to hit create account. All right, don't save it anywhere else. You don't need to add it to anything else. You're just gonna leave that. You're hosting it yourself. Okay, uh, this now brings you back to the screen here. Hey, time to log in, create a new account to access your secure vault. And we're gonna hit continue. And then we're gonna enter our master, master password we just set up and hit log in. All right, and here we are. This is our vault. This is where we get to uh, create passwords. This is where we get to add new passwords. This is where we get to look up and organize and do all of our passwords that we would like to do. Uh, so what I can do here now is, let's say I wanted to add an item. Um, so perhaps I, I want to do a new password for a, a particular website. Okay. Well, I can, I can basically store anything in here. There's logins. So we're going to, we're going to maybe add an item here. What type is this? It's a login. Is it a card? Is it an identity? Is it a secure note? So it's a login for something. Okay. What do we want to call it? Sessions website. This is a fake one that I'm just making up. Uh, what folder do you want it in? Well, I haven't created any folders yet. We can do that in a little bit, but we'll leave that for now. Uh, username, BTC sessions, uh, password, worst password ever. We'll just do test and we will leave that there. And then what is the URL? We'll just say uh, BTC sessions.ca. And then, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. You can leave a note for it. You can do any other custom fields, whatever like that. We can save it. And that is now a vault item here in Vault Warden for me. And I will be able to access that via Bitwarden. So we'll do that momentarily. But that's the basic navigation when you're actually using Vault Warden, like the, the full um, overview here instead of just the plugin. Okay. And this gives you the ability to add folders and organize things and do whatever you would like to do with them. Now let's see what this looks like with the plugin. Let's actually log into the plugin and see how it behaves. So over here on the right under Bitwarden, you're going to open it up. Now I find that when you, when you paste in, uh, your, your Tor, uh, address, as what you're connecting to, it kind of stretches so it doesn't quite fit. So anyways, um, it, it might be a little bit offset there. That's okay. You put in your email address up top in the white field and then you're gonna hit continue. And then it says you're gonna log in with your master password. So you're gonna type that in as well and hit the login button. And would you look at that? we now have access to our vault. So we can see the types of different credentials that we've saved here. Um, we have only one. So we have that, that previous uh, website. 
um, that we saved. And you can see if we click it, then it has the name of it, the username, which allows us to copy it, the password we can copy, um, all of that. You can even launch the website directly from there. Now, of course, this is an actual, an actual credential that can be used. It was just made up, but nonetheless, it is there. Now there's one other thing that you may want to do so that you don't have two password managers kind of competing for each other because Firefox does have kind of a, a built-in one is uh, if you go to Firefox and then preferences, um, it'll bring up this. You're going to go to privacy and security and uh, with the logins and passwords, you just unclick ask to save logins and passwords, autofill, all that stuff. Just hit the check mark off. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it. Um, you can leave, yeah, you can leave the rest there. So that will just prevent the uh, annoying habit of it asking to save passwords not in Bitwarden, okay? So let's now dive into actually using Bitwarden and logging and saving and logging in and adding new passwords natively from your browser. Okay, so here we are on Twitch, and let's say we wanted to sign up for a Twitch account. Um, so just on, on the main website, there's the sign up button. So I'm going to hit that, and that takes us to this pop up sign in screen. And okay, I want a username, I don't know, sat stacker 2100, and maybe I want a password. Now, um, the password we can use Vault Warden to actually uh, create one for us. And so I can actually, maybe I'll copy that username for now, but we're just gonna hit add a login and uh, let's just generate a new password here. When you hit the generate button, which I'll, I'll show that again, just from this login screen here, there's under password, there's that little two, a uh, little circle with two arrows. You're gonna hit that, it will generate a new password. You then have the options around uh, well, is this a password or username? What are you trying to generate? And then secondly, uh, you can set up basically all of the details of it. How long does it need to be? Does it have upper and lower case numbers, special characters, all of that? How many minimum numbers or special characters are required, so on and so forth? And there you go. You can just copy and paste that in um, on the website itself. Paste. Okay, so we've got a username. We've got a password here. Now watch this. When I hit next step, I get an option up top here that auto fills. It says, hey, should Bitwarden remember this password for you? Um, and we can just hit save. And so then when we when we pop up here, we can see, oh, it literally saved all my credentials. The website, the username, the password, it's all there. Okay, fantastic. Then we can move forward with going ahead and actually signing up for the rest of this. And it will all be saved into our, our Bitwarden. In fact, if I go back to our, our Vault Warden here and I just hit refresh, I gotta put in my master password again, I can actually see, okay, well, Twitch has been added there, even though it's it's not a, a credential that I'm actually using. Um, hey, it's, it's all been set in there and it's all saved. So what I'm gonna do is off screen, I'm gonna add, um, I'm gonna, I'll delete these and I'll add some real credentials that actually allows me to log into websites. So I'll put in my real Twitch page, uh, which I do have, by the way. Um, not, not that anybody watches on Twitch typically, but hey, nonetheless, I'm gonna put that in and then we're just gonna see what it looks like with the actual login screen and how Bitwarden and Vault Warden behave when we go to the website normally. Okay, so I've now put in my real Twitch credentials. I've logged out, uh, you know, I'm not logged in currently on Twitch. So I can now go up to the login screen here and click it. And uh, I can then, uh, if I like, go to Bitwarden and here's my, my Twitch credential, my real one. And I can just tap that and it'll autofill everything for me. I can hit login. Of course, it's going to send me a text message to verify my login, uh, but nonetheless, it worked. It autofilled. Everything is all set. Don't need to do anything else. Fantastic. So we've now explored being able to access and use Bitwarden self-hosted on your computer via Firefox browser. However, you're also going to 
want to be able to access your passwords when you're using your mobile device as well. So up next, we're going to dive into the mobile interface uh, using the Bitwarden app along with Orbot, which again allows us to access the Tor network and thus access our Start9 embassy from wherever we may be. It's actually less steps um, to set up because you don't have to do really anything with your browsers or anything. It's just all kind of good to go. And uh, yeah, we're going to dive into that right now. So let's jump to the phone. Oh, and just one quick note, unfortunately, right now for iPhone users, you're kind of stuck utilizing uh, just your local network. So you can use it while you're at home. But unfortunately, if you're on the go with iPhone, um, just something about the inner workings and, and how it deals with Tor and being able to deal with Tor and specific applications, uh, a appears to give some users some headache. I don't, I don't know uh, if a resolution is coming, um, but nonetheless, we're gonna be focusing on Android. And then as Start9 rolls out other connection methods, then you may have a much easier time uh, being able to, again, access your Bitwarden on the go. Okay, so here we are on my phone. Um, I've downloaded two applications. One is Bitwarden and one is Orbot. And Orbot, again, will enable us to access Tor, thus allowing Bitwarden to communicate with our Start9 embassy wherever it may be so we can access it remotely. Um, so first thing you're gonna wanna do is you open up Orbot um, and it says, hey, it's gonna be using a VPN, all that stuff. You're just gonna hit okay. All right, it's gonna give you some intro stuff here. You can just cycle through it, read it um, if you wanna learn. And now it says you can enable any app to go through Tor using our built-in VPN. So at this point during initial setup, you can choose here. I'll show you how to do it from the main screen as well, but basically we want Bitwarden to be one of those applications that's going to use Tor. For now, I'm just gonna hit done so you can see what it looks like from the main screen. Okay. So basically we have here, we can see that Tor is currently running right now. It says connected to the Tor network. If we were to stop that, it would look like this. Uh, so pretty much we just, we want Tor running by, by hitting uh, that main big button in the middle. Okay, now you're gonna want VPN mode on, and then you're going to select, uh, you're going to select Tor enable apps down here. So you're gonna hit the little uh, icon there, the little uh, settings icon, and you're just going to find Bitwarden, you're going to check it off, and you're going to hit back. You're going to now see it listed here as Tor enabled apps. You see that VPN mode is on, Tor is connected to the network, we are all set. Now at this point, we're going to go into Bitwarden. And just like we did on desktop, we're going to go into the settings up top right, and we're going to paste in the information from our Start9 embassy. So you can go on your computer, you can copy that information and send it over to yourself however you see fit, whether that be like a t Telegram saved message, um, a message to yourself on Signal, uh, you know, what, whatever method you wanna get it to yourself, just get it over there, you're gonna paste it in here and hit save. So we'll be right back after I paste in that info. Okay, so that has now been saved here. I got a little notification down below. I can now put in my email address that I had associated with my uh, Bitwarden that I, or Vault Warden that I set up. I'm gonna hit continue. And you'll know that it's working because it loads in the first place, all right? Uh, so at this point, I can now put in my master password just off screen and hit log in. And lo and behold, here we are in our Vault Warden slash Bitwarden setup, our self-hosted uh, setup. And we can see there's that login credential that we created or that I created off screen for Twitch. And that would allow me to log into the Twitch application. Now, keep in mind that if you do want this to autofill within your applications, you also have to set this here not just on your computer, but on the application itself. So you can go to settings and then autofill services up top and you can just toggle this on and you can pretty much say which autofill service do you want. If you're migrating from something like LastPass to Bitwarden, then you would just toggle and say, hey, it'll say, make sure you trust it. You hit okay. 
once this is toggled on, whenever you go to log into something and if there's an associated credential, it will auto fill it for you. Alternatively, again, you can just go to the application itself and just go to your vault and, and search up what you like and you'll be able to go and copy the information that you need and paste it in. All right. So that means that you now have your self-hosted everything, all of your credentials on the go. It's not in the hands of a third party and, uh, and you can get it from anywhere you need. Now, we need to discuss one more thing about the safety of this information in particular. What if your device fails? You want to make sure this stuff is safe. So let's talk about backups. So of course, if you're hosting your own data, you're hosting your own passwords, you wanna make sure that there's some redundancy involved. And what I mean by that is you want it in more than one place because if you only have a single copy of your passwords and you lose that copy, that is a massive pain trying to re-access all that stuff. Not to mention if you have things that basically are unrecoverable on there, important other information. Uh, so you wanna have backups and luckily the embassy has a built-in function where you can actually back up everything yourself. Um, this is found over on the left-hand side under system and there is an option to create a backup. Now, in my original Start9 video, I went through kind of being able to set up and designate a drive on your computer where you're going to be backing this up um, and i would recommend that you do this regularly uh, as as good practice anyways um, but this allows you to restore from backup if something were to happen to your embassy and it were to crash you can spin up a new one and you can get all of your information uh, you know bitcoin or not so in this case, it would be your passwords. Uh, you can restore that from the redundant copy you've ha you have. There are also options in terms of running a secondary start nine and having that basically sync the information between the two of them. I haven't dove into that in tutorials yet. You can look for that in the future. Nonetheless, uh, you would just go to your backup screen um, it would bring up all of the different services that you're currently running um, as well. So I have my embassy backup right here uh, and it's going to a local drive that I have. And you basically select everything you want to back up. It's good to back up pretty much everything. You hit the backup selected, you enter your master password for your embassy, and then you hit create. And so this will bring, bring up the screen. It will be begin backing up everything. You can see that now listed in here is my vault warden down below. Um, previously, all of this other stuff would have been backed up in my, in my last backup. Well, now it will be updated with all of the information from my vault warden as well. Again, redundancy is key here so that you don't uh, you don't end up not being able to access all of your accounts because you decided to be self-sovereign. With that comes the responsibility of making sure that uh, you're still okay if something goes wrong. It's also a good idea, as I said, to have those copies of things actually stored in a way where if there's a house fire or something, you don't want your Start9 embassy burning up and the redundant drive of it. So when I mention things like having a secondary device somewhere that it backs up to, worth looking into. I'll get on those videos soon. But for now, uh, you at least have your redundant copy on another drive. Extra note, I'm in the midst of editing this video now and I forgot to mention that even if um, something goes awry with your embassy and your backup drive in the same fell swoop, if you had Bitwarden on your phone and you previously had other, you had your passwords there and you were using them, um, it will still be accessible there. So like if you want to test it, put your phone on airplane mode, you can still log into Bitwarden with your master password and will decrypt all of your other uh, credentials so that you can still access them. So you still have that redundancy in just your mobile device as well. So keep that in mind. Um, you know, it's it's not as, as scary uh, not having a secondary device outside, uh, but it is nice to have it in multiple places. And if you have at least the file or if you at least have the application Bitwarden on your phone, which is linked up to this, they will sync 
every time that there's a connection, but if they're not connected, they'll still be accessible on your mobile device later. In the end, I think that Vault Warden and Bitwarden are an excellent tool to add to your tool belt while you're on your path to self-sovereignty. Uh, anytime you can get your data and take it out of the hands of a third party and put it into something you host yourself, I think that's a positive thing as long as you have some redundancy there. And this is low-hanging fruit that anybody can start on today. You can begin migrating gradually from maybe another third-party platform that you're using until you build up all of your passwords and relevant info into your own self-hosted solution. So let me know what you think about Vault Warden, about the Start9 Embassy and all of this, uh, and what do you think are some other great tools in the realm of self-sovereignty? I look forward to seeing your comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, please do like, subscribe, share. All those things help a ton in getting this content in front of more eyeballs. If you want to help the show in another way, you can hit up the previously mentioned sponsors down below. That was Hoddle Hoddle, CoinKite, Nunchuck, and Start9, of course. Uh, you can also hit up my website, btcsessions.ca, and there you can find a ton of great information as well as the ability to book me one-on-one -on -one for private education sessions if the free tutorials online aren't quite enough and you need some extra hand-holding, well, you can sit down with me directly and I'll be able to help you through. As well as if you're going to be traveling and perhaps, you know, places like Miami or wherever there's conferences and I'm there, I'm likely running workshops and you can find those on my website as well. And finally, if you really liked what you saw, you can always drop me a Bitcoin tip at my Strike page. You don't need Strike to use it. You just head over to stri uh, strike.me slash BTC sessions, type in any amount you want, hit the tip button, and you will see a, a lightning invoice. Or if you prefer, just tap the arrow to the right, you'll see a regular Bitcoin QR code. With that, I am out. Have yourselves a wonderful day or evening, wherever you may be. See you guys next time for your daily session. Bitcoin.